everyone and welcome back to the third part of this course. The previous two parts we discussed how to set up the environment, how to get data or tables into your environment or into your database. And we also went through briefly on the interface of the Oracle SQL developer. For this tutorial, we're going to work on SQL statements. There are four different categories of statements in Oracle SQL. We have the DDL statements, which are your create tables, your alter, your drop, truncate, rename tables command. You have the DML, which is your select, insert, update, delete, and merge commands. You also have the DCL statements, which are your permissions, grant, and revoke, and the TCL statements, which are your commit, rollback, and save points. We are going to start off using the DML statements and gradually we will get into the other categories. Now we are in the Oracle SQL developer tools. If you look on the left of the SQL developer, you would see a column or a section for tables. If you click on the plus drop down button, we have seven different tables in our database. So those table contains data about employees in a workplace. The first statement we're going to look at is the select statement. If you want to retrieve data from any of these tables, you use the keyword select and the name of the column you want to select. If you want to select, let's say employee ID, you can use the keyword select employees ID and then you say which table you want to select the employee ID from. In order to specify which table you want to select, from, you have to use the keyword from and the name of the table. When you're finished writing your statement, you have to press the green run statement button to execute your statement. Now, if you look at the bottom half of the screen, you see that we have a list of employee ID from the employees table. You can also select multiple columns in your table. For example, you can select employee ID last name and uh, let's select first name as well. And we already have the firm keyword and then you press execute. So here you see we have the employee ID, the last name and the first name. If you want to select multiple columns in your table, you have to use a comma to separate the names. If you do not use the comma, it will be an error. So let's remove the comma. The last column that we specified, there is a red squiggle line under it. That's an indication of an error in your statement. So if we press run, we should get a note at the bottom telling you what is the error about. So to select multiple columns, you must use the comma. Now, if you want to select every column in your table, you do not have to specify each name of the columns. You can use the asterisk and the asterisk mean to select all or select everything inside of the table you specify. So if we press run statement, all the columns in the employee table will be displayed. If we look on the left, we have employee ID, first name, last name, email, phone number, hire date, job ID, salary, commission, PCT, manager ID, department ID. And if you look at the bottom where the results are displayed, all of the columns we just listed in the employees table is displayed when we execute our command. There are some database that contains duplicates information inside of the tables. Now, if you don't want to display duplicates in your table, there is a keyword you can use to eliminate that. And that is the distinct keyword. In your select statement, let's say we want to select the department ID. Let's execute this statement and we will see a list of department ID in the employee table. 
So here we have a list of department ID in our table. So we have a total of 107 department ID in the employees table. Now, if we use the keyword distinct, department ID will eliminate the duplicates. So let's press run statement. And here you can see we have department ID that is not duplicated. So in our previous execution, it selected all of the department's ID, but when you use the keyword distinct, it will eliminate duplicates in your table.